Okay, so today I'm, I'm going to talk about OpenFGA and, the, and how it is helping different uh, projects in the community and companies to implement fine-grained authorization for their cloud-native applications. I'm Andres Aguiar, I'm a product manager at Okta, and I lead the OpenFGA project. So OpenFGA, it's an authorization system for developers. It's based on a concept called relationship-based access control that you can see it as an evolution of role-based access control and attribute-based access control. It's inspired by a research paper that Google published a few years ago where they described how they implemented authorization internally in a way that it was flexible enough to address any of the use cases they have internally and also scale at the scale they need. What I did is go, we packaged those ideas with a server plus SDKs, APIs, and tooling to make it simple for developers to integrate this into your applications. We are currently in the sandbox stage. We are there, we're there for a year and a half, and, uh, and we just applied for incubation four days ago, so it's there. And right now, this is surprising when I saw it, but if you list all the projects by number of commits, uh, OpenFGA is in number eight, which is awesome. And so let's try to understand what OpenFGA is. So when you're modeling authorization with OpenFGA, you're gonna do two things. You're gonna first define what we call an authorization model, where you're gonna describe the entities that are relevant when you're making an authorization decision. This is a very simple role-based access control model that is kind of multi-tenant, so the same user can have different roles in different organizations, okay? And, and then we can say that if you are an admin, you can edit the organization details or view them, and if you're a member, you can only view them. So this is kind of the policy that you are defining. You're going to instantiate that policy with data. So we're gonna provide OpenFGA the data it needs to use to, to evaluate the policy. And we're going to do that in the form of what we call relationship tuples. Like they have this form, user object relationship, and if you see the way it's, uh, the colors match, right? So the organization ACME is the type, so we're saying that the user Marie is related as a member to the specific organization, right? So a user ID and uh, an uh, organization ID. So we can, in this case, we're saying Marie is a member and Anne is an admin. With this data that we have in tuples, we are actually gonna write that data to FGA, to OpenFGA. In this, is here we are showing an example using the Golang uh, SDK, but we have many other SDKs. So we add that data, we call the write uh, method in the Go SDK, which calls the write API in, in OpenFGA. And then we're gonna store that data in one of the storage providers we support. We have these three, we're gonna build more. And after you write the data, in your APIs, whenever you want to know if a user can perform an action on a resource, you're going to call the check API. In this case, I'm asking, can Marie edit details for a specific organization? And FGA is going to return yes or no, based on the data and the policies you defined. Okay? And in this case, it's going to return false because Marie is a regular member and she cannot edit the organization details. So pretty simple. Now, we are not gonna build a product to let you build RBAC. That is a problem that is already solved many times, right? The idea of relationship-based access control is that I kind of start defining the entities, other entities that map to the specific resources my application has. In this case, a folder and a document. For example, if I want to build a document managed app, so two new types. I can define hierarchy be be between those entities. For example, the folder belongs to an organization, has a parent which is another folder, the document is in a folder. And when, the when defined permissions, we can start walking that hierarchy. For example, the editor can be the owner of the folder or the admin of the organization that owns the folder. In the, the editor from the document can be an owner, the owner of the document or the editor from parent, right? So we can start walking that graph and when we ask if I use a couple of my action in a resource, we use the model and the tuples to answer those questions. This model is still very simple. If you go to GitHub and search for FGA models, there's a lot of companies that are building FGA models and that, that are way more complex than that one, right? So this is searching in the GitHub. 
And then we have a lot of great developer tooling. So we have an integration with Visual Studio Code, lets you edit those models and validate them and run tests. A lot of SDKs and integrations with different platforms, a Helm chart, GitHub Actions, a CLI. So we are really trying to make developers' life very easy when implementing authorization. So how OpenAPGA is being used today in the community and in the industry? Let's see some examples. Canonical is using OpenFGA in different parts of the Ubuntu Pro stack. So in the next version of Ubuntu Pro, if you are running the server, you'll be running OpenFGA. Suplo has, is, has a product that is a, an API gateway that lets you add authentication, analytics, and rate limits to your APIs. And they use OpenFGA to, for each API key they issue, they let you decide which features of uh, Suplo you can use, like tunnels, custom domains, API key buckets, monetization buckets. So the permissions are managed with OpenFGA. Stacklock is a company that has a project called Minder, which is an open source project for supplain, uh, software supply chain security. And they have a CLI instead of a UI to manage permissions. So you can list the roles, and each time you grant a role, you are writing a tuple in an OpenFGA database. Fiano is an automated governance pl platform. They let you define different things that can be run in a build pipeline. You, have different, you, have, you need to have permissions to add steps to the pipeline. You need to have specific permissions to define what is the green, what is yellow, and what is red, depending on the thresholds it check. And you have to have specific permissions to, to uh, override one of those checks and accept the risk of this test doesn't run, it's not running, for example. Okay? All of those managed by OpenFGA. OpenObserve is a, an, a full stack observability platform, let you define roles. In each role, you can define which uh, the resources like logs, traces, and dashboards you can edit or not. Moss lets you issue company credit cards and define the different permissions that users have on their budgets. Read AI lets you produce instant meeting summaries, generate transcripts, actualize some key questions from recordings, and share reports across the team. You can do that with OpenFGA, that shared dialogue. So if you like this, you can try to start modernizing your authorization at OpenFGA.dev. We'll be in the CNCF Project Pavilion on Wednesday morning and Thursday afternoon. Thank you very much.